and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and here let's check out the top new games made with Unity launch in June 23. This was quite an interesting month, I thought perhaps there would be fewer releases because of the Steam Festival, but not really. Still tons of games and still very difficult to pick just 10. The reason why I make these videos is to show you everything the engine can do, the only limit is really just your own skills and imagination, and the variety and the awesomeness of the games shown here really puts that to the test. All of these games are uniquely impressive, so the list is in no particular order, except for the number one game that is my personal pick of the month. Also speaking of the Steam Festival, my own game, Dinky Gardens was part of it with a free demo which is still available right now. It's a fun solo or co-op game with some automation, building and defense where you must keep the tiny defenseless dinkies safe from harm. Go try out the demo, add it to your wishlist and follow for devlogs. Alright, so starting off at number 10 with a fun unique game called Driftwood. This one is all about downhill longboarding and very importantly you play as a sloth, so definitely a very niche genre but great presentation. The concept of a sloth going downhill at high speeds is definitely quite interesting. Personally I love the visual style, very nice and appealing, it looks like a more slightly casual racing game which personally I quite like. You've got some drift controls to go down on turns in a nice satisfying way, there's a trick system so you can do 360s and keep on going, you can travel to new places and experience some interesting tracks all with a nice relaxing soundtrack, you can play either solo for a nice casual time or if you prefer there's also a competitive mode where every second counts. It is out now in early access with 200 very positive reviews. Then for some building and physics, here is Mars First Logistics, it's a very physically accurate simulator where you build some machines from realistic pieces and set them up to complete all kinds of tasks. Like the name implies, you're on Mars, so you start off with some basic machines, just some wheels and a grabber, use it to pick up a simple object and move it around, then you complete some missions and unlock new parts to play with. The level of customization is truly insane, there are tons of parts that can be combined in an infinite way to build any machine you can think of. The missions involve carrying all sorts of strangely shaped objects, and you need to build your machine in such a way that it can actually pick up those objects. Also has a nice visual style with some thick outlines. Several games have done this already and I think it always looks good. If you like some realistic physics simulator games then this looks like a great new one. It is out now in early access with 200 very positive reviews. Next here's one that is definitely not for me but it does look great, it's called Killer Frequency. Personally I am not a fan of horror games, I get scared way too easily so I don't normally look at them for these lists, but this one has so many insanely positive reviews that I just had to give it a look and it actually doesn't seem to have too many jump squares so perhaps I could even handle this one. The premise is you're a late night radio talk show host where the callers are being stalked by a mysterious killer, it's essentially a first person puzzle game, through your choices you can decide who lives and who dies and either don't listen to their sighs of relief or their screams of horror. Explore your surroundings, gather some clues and try to help each of your callers survive the night. The voice acting is absolutely excellent and visually the game also looks gorgeous. This is something that a lot of horror games do very well. All the assets are super high quality, tons of great effects. It is out now with 500 overwhelmingly positive reviews, so that is 95% positive. So if this intrigues you, definitely give it a look. Next, if you're into colony building with tons of objects and tons of automation, here is Nova Lands. You land on an alien planet and you have your trusty ray tool weapon thingy that can help you gather resources and construct buildings and machines. Start off by manually harvesting some resources, then quickly boost your productivity with some automated bots. Tell those bots to grab resources from one place and drop them somewhere. The map is really interesting in that it is based on tiles. You explore the world and unlock more and more tiles which are very unique. Each tile has different objects and different resources. You can also engage in combat and uncover mysteries. You expand and get to a point where you can even build a spaceship and fly towards the stars to mine some asteroids and bring them back to land. The scale looks really massive while also looking quite inviting and the mechanic of unlocking different tiles in the world makes it look quite interesting. It is out now and already has 500 very positive reviews. Next here's one with a very unique visual mechanic, it's called Pile Up. It's a building game where you start on a small plot of land and slowly build vertically. You build houses for your people, then those people also have needs, they need some power, food, water and all kinds of things. Keep building upwards and keep your people happy. Unlock new buildings and resources, complete some islands and discover new ones, or hop onto sandbox mode and build without any limitations. Visually it looks really great, a very nice chill style, so something kind of like Townscaper, but all in a really tiny confined space. It looks like a nice mix between a very cozy and inviting game, but also one where you must pay attention and fulfill the needs of your people. And bonus points, there's also a nice friendly whale you can pet. It is out now in early access and has over 200 very positive reviews. Then every month there's tons of new vampire survival likes, Here's an interesting one called Army of Ruin, features the gameplay that you expect with these kinds of games, so tons and tons of units and lots of ways to get rid of them. 
These games are all also about polish, and based on the trailer, this one looks really satisfying to play. It's a great case study to see how you can make just something like unlocking a chest feel really satisfying. Features tons of unique abilities with some very unique visuals. The game looks really nice and colorful, which is also nice and different from all of the other Vampire Survival likes. You can upgrade your weapons, unlock better and more powerful weapons, take out thousands of enemies and do it all over again. It is out now and already has over a thousand very positive reviews. For some VR, here is an awesome one called Battle Talent. It's a super fast-paced, physics-based, sword-fighting roguelike game. This is one of those where I really love how it looks, the gameplay looks excellent. It's a nice mix of swords and pistols, so you can slash your enemies, throw them in the air and then shoot them. So kind of like a first-person Devil May Cry. Or the weapons also remind me of the movie Equilibrium. Really awesome movie, one of my favorites just based on the awesome style. Beyond swords and pistols, you also have some magic, so you can throw some fireballs or some ice spells and a bunch more. All of the objects, they are all physically based, which makes it look really satisfying. You can fight over 80 enemies with 100 weapons and 60 perks. On top of all that, it even has already over a thousand player created mods. Now the question with melee and VR is just how good does it feel? And this one seems so fast paced with some excellent sound effects that it does look like pairing and striking feels very satisfying. It looks really intense which some people can't handle. Thankfully this one also has a free demo, so if you want to try it out and see if you can handle this much movement give it a try. It is out now with almost 200 very positive views which is a great amount for a VR game. Then here is one that is targeted for a very specific audience which you can tell by the name alone. It is called Slayer's X, Terminal Aftermath, Vengeance of the Slayer. With a name like that and visuals you can really tell that it's going for a really over the top retro style, very old school visuals, intentionally low quality assets and sprites with some very inventive weapons and enemies. The music is awesome, I mostly don't pay attention to music but I really enjoyed listening to the trailer so if the final game has music just like that then that's awesome. Basically if you like retro shooters, if you enjoy what you're seeing right now then give it a shot. It is out now and already has overwhelmingly positive reviews with over 500 of them at 98% positive which is insane. Up next here is a very strange spin-off, it's called Kingdom 80s. This one is part of the Kingdom series, those medieval side-scrolling strategy games. This one is all about being set in the 80s. Now that's a very strange concept for a spin-off, but honestly I do think it looks great. It features similar side-scrolling gameplay, so you grab your bike, go left or right, pick up some coins, you build up your town with some defenses and stay safe from these mysterious monsters. It is more story focused, so you can meet some unique characters and befriend them. You can write together and give them roles as either builders or soldiers. Go out on adventures, expand your kingdom, fortify it with walls and defensive turrets, and when the night comes then you can defend. During the day you can explore the town, you can visit the shops or find some items on the skate park. All in all, it's definitely a strange concept for a spinoff, but it doesn't look quite interesting. It has mostly positive reviews, with the main negative being the short duration, but if you like the 80s style and short story focused games then give it a try. And at number 1 for my personal pick of the month, here is a huge hit of this month, Battle Bit Remastered. Honestly, it's not just the hit of this month, but almost the biggest hit of the year. It had peak concurrent users of 86,000. This is an insane amount for any game, let alone an indie game. This likely means it already sold millions of copies. The game itself is a massive online shooter with combined arms, something like Battlefield, meaning you've got some infantry, helicopters, tanks, ships, and a bunch more, all fighting on huge worlds with 256 players, so really massive scale. And it also features tons of very satisfying destruction, so very much like Battlefield Bad Company 2, which personally I Really love playing that one. The gunplay is of course excellent. For a game like this to be successful everything needs to be on point. They also have a focus on high performance and high take rate servers. Clearly they focus very heavily on making the gameplay as perfect as possible. Features a classic class system with some medics, assault, engineer, recon and support roles. It's got 19 huge dynamic maps and 45 weapons. Now this one is called remastered but I have no idea what the original was. Whatever it was clearly people wanted a bunch more. It just recently came out and already has 25,000 very positive positive reviews even though it's only in early access. Truly one of the biggest hits not just this month but the entire year. It's really awesome to see indie devs find this much success. From what I can find this team is mostly just 3 people working on this game for several years. Really impressive. Alright so that's 10 awesome new games made with Unity on launch in June 23. I hope this list helped you see how the Unity engine is capable of building anything. The only limits are really just your own skills and imagination. Check out my own Steam game Dinky Gardens and add it to your wishlist. Alright hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.